three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. All right, welcome back to segment two. A, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> well, actually, wait, we started at 8.30 this morning. We were a little early to uh, speak to Carly Fiorina, who, uh, again, thank you very much for making time to, to speak to us this morning. Candidate Fiorina, we appreciate it. Coming up later on, we will have Leon Rideout, who's running for the New Hampshire State Senate, uh, the State Senate, not the U.S. Senate, and then Bill O'Brien, former New Hampshire House Speaker, who will talk to us about the race for U.S. Senate. We'd like to, uh, uh, we'll wait for that to happen. But uh, for now, we want to talk to our next guest. He is, I just dropped his bio off the top of my desktop. Uh, Tim comes from the Western Energy Alliance. Uh, he has extensive experience, experience in educating policymakers on energy, forest management, mining, and manufacturing issues. And uh, from 1998 to 2002, served as president of the Oregon Forest Industries Council. And we'd like to welcome Tim Wigley to the program. Good morning. Nope, hang on. There we go. Tim, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, it's you have this internet radio show thing and technical problems abound, but we're not going to talk about technical problems because we bigger fish to fry in the name of the clean power plan. And um, we've been uh, at GraniteRock.com, we've been going after our own Senator Ayotte, who uh, expressed some public support for the plan, and of course we, we are totally opposed to it. Well, it's... Uh as you saw yesterday with the president's announcement on on Keystone, you know that this is it's a prime example of kind of what this administration's attitude is about a, a host of things. And clearly, with the clean power plant plan uh, hurting rural Americans, particularly, uh, we we're, we're in the thick of, the, of of an attorney general battle here in Colorado with, with the governor's office. Uh, uh, it is going to cause all kinds of hardships on, on, on particularly rural Americans and poor Americans who are going to pay through the nose on, on uh, heating and, and, and cooling bill, bills throughout the year. So uh, this administration is clearly out of control. Do you guys have a, an estimate on what it's going to cost in job losses, job losses to the industry? Well, as far as how it impacts the oil and natural gas industry, I don't have figures like that. But, but just if you look at... Uh, what I see from coal mining jobs that have been lost, I've seen the estimates being around 40,000 coal jobs that have already been lost due to uh, rules and regulations put forth by this administration. And, you know, th- th- there never seems to be any concern from the administration about job loss, economic impact, and so forth. I, I swear they don't take that into consideration whenever they make these decisions. It's all about an agenda that, that they want to push forward, and it's concerning. And, and I'm telling you, People are going to feel financially. It's, I've always I've, I've been involved in, 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 in battles over environmental policy for years, and I've always said it, it's kind of cool until it starts costing you money. And these rules and regs put forth in a host of areas are going to start costing Americans money. Well, we, we're up here in New Hampshire, and of course we've been suffering under the yoke of RGGI for a long time now, so I'm very familiar with the effect of carbon trading schemes and the cost of electricity. New Hampshire is usually one of the top five, or at least in the top five, uh, ten, for uh, cost of kilowatt hour, uh, cost per kilowatt hour. So uh, one of the things that I was looking at when I was writing about um, the Clean Power Plan uh, over at Watchdog.org was that this plan actually did, um, includes a cap-and-trade scheme, which I don't think people realize, you know, that what this is going to do to the cost of electricity. There's no question about it, and, and quite frankly, uh, uh, people are not paying attention to the degree that they should. These things are so complex, so complicated. If you've noticed a trend that a lot of times these rules and regulation packages come out on a Friday evening or they come out on a holiday weekend and so forth, I fully expect something to come out at Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's just because no one's paying attention, but the people are going to start paying attention because they're going to start noticing it in their in their monthly statements they get from their, from their utility. And you know, it, it's just unfortunate that, that we're in a situation in this country that this administration clearly is trying to to repay their friends in the environmental community, uh, repay uh, 
uh, allegiances and loyalties they had to them, and but unfortunately, it's going to be in the backs of some of your listeners. Well, it's going to be on the backs of some of their constituents too, which is a really interesting thing. Uh, the unions are all bent out of shape over Keystone, which is good for our from our point of view. Uh, and uh, you know, th- this thing costs jobs. It's mostly costing union jobs too, and it's it's hurting, as you say, the middle and working class, which again, uh, a lot of those are union folks. Uh, uh, you know, Barack Obama is doing more damage to the Democrat Party as any, than anybody else. Unfortunately, he's getting so far along with his agenda that uh, it may not matter in the long run. Yeah, you know, I, I know you guys in a state like New Hampshire uh, carefully watched the election results from around the country on Tuesday, and I saw the aftermath figures of what actually has happened to the Democrat Party as far as number of seats, governorships, legislative patrols, and so forth. I mean, he's been devastating to them. And I have many good friends that, 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 that work in the unions. I used to re- represent some of the private sector unions in a previous job. But I keep, I keep reminding them, look, guys, if the elections have consequences. And clearly this administration is not uh, concerned about the working man. They're concerned about an agenda. And quite frankly, it's scary. And, and I'm worried. I'm truly worried about the next 14, 15 months until he actually leaves office, what more damage he can inflict. I I have a question for you, Tim. My name is Jane Cormier, um, and my question is, you talked about when the the citizens are going to start feeling this. What is the time frame for when this kicks in to when we will start seeing it on our electric bills? Well, you're already starting to see a lot of these companies, and again, I represent oil and natural gas companies, not, not utilities, but you're already, as I talk to my friends in the utility industry, uh, they're they're trying to, to educate people right now as to what the rules and regs are, what it means mm-hmm. to, to, to to them as operating companies, and what it's ultimately ultimately going to mean uh, to to constituents to customers. I would presume sometime you know early in in 2016, just like you're seeing in other things like Obamacare and others, that some of this stuff mm-hmm. starts to kick in, and people will will, will start feeling the impact of it. Uh, so will it be like Obamacare right now is imploding and, and the costs are going up? The further into it we go, you know, the, the higher the costs go. Is this going to be very similar where it will be, you know, easy to perhaps look at at the beginning because it won't be so much as it will maybe a year or two in? I think there's a very strong possibility of that. And while I wish no ill will to anybody like me have, you know, having to pay our, my monthly bill from, from my local utility, Unfortunately, it, it may take some pain like that to get people's mm. eyes opened and, and, and get them activated and thinking about, you know, who they choose in 2016, whether it be, I heard you guys promo, whether it be legislative seats or U.S. Senate seats or governor seats or whatever. They have to think about this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, sometimes we don't get there until we have to feel some pain. There you first. go. Yep. So uh, one of the problems that uh, one of the other kinds of pain that people don't really see comes from the regulatory cost. And, of course, the oil and gas industry in particular bears a tremendous, tremendous regulatory cost. Um, and, and people don't get it. It's, 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 it's tens of billions of dollars annually. Let's just take a kind of a hypothetical. What happens to the price of oil and gas, let's just say, if somebody were to cut even just half of those regulations? Well, I think what you'll there are several things. And I don't I don't mean to to, to to dodge your question or evade it, but there, there, there's so many things that have that have come at us. Uh, you you followed recently uh, uh, new federal fracking rules that have been tossed out by a judge, or at least temporarily tossed out. Fracking is nothing new. It's been around since the 1940s. It's always been regulated by state, whether it be your state if you have oil and gas production, or, or here in Colorado and elsewhere. Uh, states are closest to the resource. They got people on the ground. They know what's happening, and they know the topography and so forth. Yet the federal government felt the need to issue some new rules and regulations about fracking, increasing costs, increasing difficulty in getting permits to drill, and so forth and so on. We filed suit against that, and recently won a case up in up in uh, Wyoming with a federal judge. Basically, put it on hold. It's just a prime example of things working very well. Things working pretty efficiently, if you can get much efficiency out of federal government, and yet they feel like it's going to make the process better if they add yet another layer. And so, as it relates to the price of oil, it's a very, very delicate situation. To drill an, an average well, no matter where you are, is going to be 3 to $5 million. And you don't know for sure you're going to strike 
you know, black gold or whatever you want to call it. If you add on the, the uh, just unbelievable cost on top of that, it makes it less attractive for people to go do the exploration and do the production. So you have the possibility of, here we are now, the largest producer of oil and natural gas in the world, and this industry, this administration wants to deter that, wants to dampen it. Yeah, I, and, I, yeah. and a quick word on, on fracking. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, most of us have well water. Well, guess what? New Hampshire's on granite. How do you squeeze water out of a stone? My well company offers fracking for water. <laughs> well, that's, it's, it's become the, the, the great fundraising tool for the other side. Yeah. They're, they're trying to scare people you know, with, with fracking. It's new technology. We need to study it longer. That's nonsense. And it's, it's not just fracking. What's really changed the game in oil and gas is horizontal directional drilling. And, and so the ability to drill down two or three miles and drill out two or three miles underneath the surface. It's, it's amazing technology. Ten years ago, even though fracking was around, nobody had any idea America would have the presence we have in production of oil and natural gas. Imagine what ten years later from now could be like. How about um, uh, sort of a two-part question? One, obviously, uh, there's a lot of uh, resources that we can't get at, which brings me to point two. It's all tied up on federal land. Do you see any, is there, we always talk about, there's a lot of federal land in New Hampshire. If you look at the map, it's scary how much of it is. Absolutely. Not anything like out west where the whole entire <laughs> states are, are locked up by the federal government. But um, is there any movement in the states to do anything about the federal land monopoly? Yeah, there is. And, and I wish my friends in New Hampshire and other parts of the East Coast could come out here and literally see and view a map and see the ownership by the federal government in many of these states. And most of these lands, are they're not paying taxes to support schools, they're not helping create businesses, and so forth. A number of legislatures out here in the West have been dealing with this for the last few years in a pretty intent way of just basically telling, uh, if, if this administration is going to ignore the rules, and a lot of these states are saying, well, why don't we just take back the land? We're better able to manage it. We're we're here and so forth. So it, it's growing momentum. Uh, if if President Obama was was to be able to run for a third term, I think you would see it get even more intense because people out here are just tired of it, they're tired of being surrounded by forests that burn every year because the federal government doesn't manage it. And they're tired of, of of seeing this great opportunity for jobs, economic development, tax revenue, and so forth unable to be tapped because the president doesn't like oil and natural gas. So you heard what he said yesterday. He wants to push to keep it in the ground. Said yeah, because it's press doing so much good there. <clears throat> we actually had a good friend of ours, uh, Jerry DeLimas, who went out uh, during the Bundy Ranch uh, standoff, and he was out there uh -huh. actually leading the defense of the ranch. So we had a good interview with him. So we're we ha just us, you know, in this room at Granite Rock .com, We're very familiar with that situation. But again, it is it is it is bad. I think that you're absolutely right. There should be tours of Easterners, East Coasters, who, who go out and then I'll go. Okay, try to go for a walk and don't step on any federal land. Good luck. You know, it just <laughs> well, you know, like like species. I mean, if the the gray wolf is a majestic animal, it's beautiful. It also eats cows and livestock and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so many of us in the West have always wanted to get bills introduced in Congress to, to, to reintroduce the gray wolf to Central Park in New York City. <laughs> Let people there understand what it's like. <laughs> These things sound good, but they don't accomplish anything. Mm. Right. All right, well, we got about a minute. Um, how do people reach you or get in touch or help? Western Energy Alliance is a trade group representing about 500 oil and gas companies in the Rocky Mountain West. It's real simple, westernenergyalliance.org. You can learn all kinds of stuff about fracking and how we produce energy, maps on economic impacts of regulations and all that. And we'd love to have people join us at westernenergyalliance.org. All right, Tim, thanks so much Excellent. for taking some time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, have, you. you have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you very much. A little update on energy, oil and gas. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back to talk about who the heck knows what, because it's Grok Talk. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. Do you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org.
from the CNHT studios in Concord, New Hampshire. Just a few blocks from the New Hampshire State House. This is Rock Talk.